All right, guys, it's your boy, DJ Reminis, back with another tutorial. Um, today, we're going to be continuing on with that hip-hop desi record that I've been mixing from Brub and uh, Calm. The record's called uh, Fuck Nado. And today, we're going to talk about mixing drums. So first things first, let's get into the uh, kicks. Um, this is my kick sub bus right here, and I'll explain why the two kicks are there. But uh, I just want to go through the, the main kick which is this guy right here. And let's just go through it without um, any processing whatsoever. So uh, this is what it sounds like without any processing. It's an all right kick. It's kind of knocking some frequencies I don't like. So let's go into the first thing that I did. I added the utility plugin and I was just checking phase. So I'll flick that on um, and engage and disengage it here if it made a difference or not. So I don't know if you can hear the difference or not, but uh, without the phase uh, correction, it's very flat and there's no bottom. As soon as I fix the phase on it, um, the bottom comes out again. So that's something you can check for when you're, you know, checking percussion, drums or whatever, even vocals, is make sure you check the phase is really important. The next thing I did was EQ uh, the drums to, you know, how I want it to sound. So I'll uh, play this with the EQ in and out. So here we go. Here's with EQ, without it, with it. All right, so let me explain the EQ. So what I did was I boosted some um, sort of subby bass uh, low frequencies around uh, 46 hertz. I just wanted the kick to come through a little bit more, the bottom end. There's some knockiness in about 100 I didn't like, and I knocked that down just a touch to give room for some other stuff as well, uh, specifically the bass. I added a little bit of tack so it kind of carries it through the mix. I didn't want it buried in because, like I said, there's some really low subby bass in this record, and I wanted the kick to come through. And finally, I rolled off everything 7K and above. I could probably actually bring that down a little bit, but I just move it around to where I like it. And then I compressed the bass just to control it a little bit. And uh, let me play that now with the uh, EQ, the, uh, the phase correction, and uh, with the compressor uh, coming in and out. With the compressor. So with the compressor, I think it nicely tightened the bass up a bit. Um, the problem that I found now that after I compressed it, um, the kick kind of lost its vibe, its sort of uh, texture. So what I did was I duplicated the kick track and here basically I parallel compressed it. So what you see here, again, I checked the phase with the utility plugin. I took the EQ and I rolled off everything uh, below 120 hertz, something like that and everything above 4K-ish. This just leaves me the mid frequencies to play with. And then all I did was here, add another compressor and I compressed the hell out of it. So this is the actual uh, signal of the parallel kick. This is what you're gonna hear. Again, I just wanted certain frequencies to come through and now I'm gonna play them both together. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but it brought some of that mid back in. I'm going to actually play this kick and I'll disengage the parallel kick chain and you'll hear the difference. Uh, more feel the difference as well. So let's try this. Here's with it. Without it. With it. What I'll do is when I'll play all the music together, I'll disengage and re-engage again. You'll hear the difference. But I got I brought back some of that punch back into the drums. Um, next is the snare. Um, there's a couple of snares in here. Uh, this first one here. So this first snare is more of a clap. And I'll play this without any processing. Okay, now I'm going to put the uh, phase in. Here's the uh, EQ settings I used on this uh, clap. 
I'll disengage it. So just on these EQ settings, um, I rolled off everything that was like 85 and below. I took a little bit out of 200-ish around there to leave room for the bass. And then I added a little bit of attack uh, just to kind of spark it up through the mix a bit and rolled off everything uh, 12K and above, which you don't need. And then finally, I compressed it just to control it a bit. And here it is with the compressor. Without it. With it again. It's nice. I mean, uh, the the clap uh, with the compressor on, it had a nice bite to it. I didn't really need to do anything else or parallel compress it. This next snare is more of a percussive hit. Um, I'll play it for you without any uh, processing. So that's how that percussive hit came to me with all that uh, effects and stuff on it. All I did was just EQ just to take some of the bottom end out and I shelved some of the top end. So this is that percussive hit with the uh, EQ settings. Here's without it. Here's with it. So again, these are all subtle changes just for these, um, you know, items to fit nice in the mix. Next up is a snare roll. I didn't do much to it. All I did was roll off on 30 and below. Um, I didn't even touch this. So I'll play this one for you. I mean, it sounded fine to me. I just rolled off any bottom that wasn't necessary. Next up, we got some hi-hats, and all I did on these was roll off a lot of bottom and actually added some sparkle and clarity up in the top. So that's like 8K around there, and I rolled off everything almost 3K and below. So here's the hi-hats. Here's without the EQ. Very sort of notchy. I don't like that. With the EQ, sparkled it up a bit. Next, we got the open hi-hat. All I did was roll off 30 and below. I actually liked the way they sounded. I didn't do anything with it. So it sounds fine to me. The next, we have this really grungy, cool sample. I don't know what it is. It sounds like a bunch of percussive hits and stuff. And to be honest, I didn't do much with this sample at all. All I did, again, was roll off 30 below no low end and this is what this sounds like all right guys so i'm going to play the drums now with all the processing on and i'll go through the parallel kick chain in a second but here's all the drums with all the processing on so you can hear what they sound like Here's a section of the drums with that grungy sample and stuff right here. It's kind of cool. Add some really nice texture to it in the back. Here's a section with all the hats. All right, guys, now I'm going to go through the kick and I'm going to turn the parallel kick on and off. And you'll hear... Uh, not much of an audible difference. It's more of a feel thing. It's going to be very bottom heavy and the kick won't come through as nicely as when I engage it again. So kind of feel for it. So here we go. So here is with the parallel kick on. Here's without it. See the kick kind of fell into the background there. Not that prevalent in the mix. Here I'll engage it again. Now it's back again. Let me turn it off. Back again. So again, these are just subtle changes that I did um, for the kick to make it come through the mix. And I'll, the reason why I did all these changes was for this last bit, which is the bass. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn everything off on the bass and we'll go through it. So this is the default bass sound that I got. It's a very low subby bass. You can't really hear it, but wait till I process it. So the first thing I did was check the phase 
everything seemed okay. Um, here are my EQ settings. Let's hear it with the EQ settings. Here's without the EQ. With the EQ again. For the EQ settings, I boosted the sub bass area, 65 hertz. I also gave the bass uh, saw a little bit of attack around uh, 2K, just some sparkle in there just for it help it move. And I rolled everything off uh, 6K and above because it's stuff you don't need. Because the bass is so subby, for it to come through the mix and hear it on your laptops, you need to add some sort of distortion. And um, Ableton comes with a beautiful plugin called Saturator. You basically just turn this on, dial it to taste, and it just works, man. So this is the bass without any distortion again with the EQ. Here's with the distortion. See how the bass just popped out of nowhere? Here it is without it. And here it is, and here it is again with it. Like I said, this plugin is awesome. I love this plugin. Because it's a sub bass, you need a compressor to control it. So I use the default compressor in um, Ableton, and this is what it sounds like uh, with the compressor. Without it. With it again. So adding that compressor, you can tell it just brought that bass right back in front of the mix. It's got some really nice harmonics to it. All right, guys, now let's listen to this record with all the drums and the bass on. You're going to notice that the drums are nice and tight, the hi-hats are crisp, and the bass has room and space for it to come through. Okay, and finally, now let's play the drums, the bass, the vocals, everything else engaged, and you're gonna hear everything nicely fits together. All right, guys, so there's how I mix my drums and bass on a hip hop record. Hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel that we're up to date with the latest, greatest information. I'm your boy DJ Reminis. Peace out.